to Tyranny Busters. And we're going to have a little echo over uh, here. So echo will fix that, Mario. We'll fix that up, Mike. I'll introduce the show. Uh, Tyranny Busters. Uh, San Diego's first and only 1,000% liberty-orientated live stream every Tuesday at 7 o'clock uh, where we uh, you know, go over the, the human condition and uh, the many different ways upon which tyranny affects that condition. Uh, our goal here is always to break through that uh, when, it, when we are able to identify it. And uh, the tyranny upon the mind, I, I think that once you do identify that tyranny, uh, it, it, that is the, the busting of it. Um, so tonight I have, uh, you know, my always trusty sidekick here, Mike Benoit. How you doing, Mike? Hey, Mario. Good. Good, good. And uh, we got a very special guest in the uh, house tonight, Mr. Brian Brady. How Hello. you doing, Brian? It's great to be here. Good to see both you and Mike again. All right, yeah. Uh, Brian is a uh, local uh, political figure here. He's doing many things. Um, I have uh, was introduced to both of these fellows uh, through the San Diego Ron Paul meetup group, and uh, was uh, I was honored to, uh, to serve along these gentlemen in the revolution. Uh, the revolution continues. Uh, it's, it's taken on many different forms now and uh, many different avenues. And, we're, you know, we're, we're our goal here is to make sure that it, it doesn't lose steam and keeps building up fire. You forgot to tell him we found you with a Sheikh Jabbar shirt, you know. Oh, yeah. And you were on the street, you know, <laughs> asking for free lunch. <laughs> well, it, it was, it's was. it been a long road here, you know, since my uh, communist, socialist, revolutionary ways. Um, I, I really, I now respect property rights, and uh, I believe in capitalism. Mike, do you remember the first time I saw him? Mario had hair down to here, and then about <laughs> three months later, he shows up with a buzz cut. I about fell over. I thought he enlisted in the Marine Corps. <laughs> and I remember that at, at, the, uh, at, the, uh, at the picnic when you showed up. I did a double take. I said, oh, gosh, look at Mario. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, man, well, that, you know, it's maybe all close again. Maybe, you know. Modeled himself after you, after he met you. I thought, oh my and, gosh, you know, Mario's supporting a Republican Party <laughs> candidate. Look at him. He's looking. He's going to become a Republican. Oh, look at him. Well. He's going to show up in a tie next. You know? <laughs> I, I haven't got to quite to the tie yet, but um, yeah, uh, you know, it's just one of those things transforming. You know, and, and uh, I, I think part of the the change in my outer shell here that you've recognized is is really um, my dedication into uh, into the message, you know, and, and coming to recognize that sometimes people, they look at the shell of the messenger and, and they're able to outcast it or, or do away with it based totally on superficial appearances. And I, I figured, well, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let them have that up on, one up on me. I'll uh, maybe pr be a little bit more presentable. Um, I'm also having a baby, mm. you know, so. That's great news. When? <laughs> well, any day now, man. So I have. Oh, I got my phone on because uh, my wife Stephanie is, she's been holding that baby in there for about nine months now, and it's uh, it's an amazing, amazing thing here. Uh, but let's uh, you know we uh, invited Brian over tonight um, because Brian is a uh, like I said a major figure in the uh, local Republican uh, party uh, here in San Diego. You're a part of the Republican Central Committee. Now, I am. Right? I was elected. Uh that office I'll take in uh, December, but uh, prior to that, I, I was appointed as uh, an alternate, and so I've been on the Central Committee now. Uh, this is the second time I've done it since I was 18. First in San Diego, when I was 18 and 19, I was on the New Jersey State Committee, uh, which was a weird story. I, I'll tell you. If you you don't know mind. Chris Christie? I don't know Chris Christie. Back th back when I was 18, he was like 22. I think he was. Uh, <laughs> I think he was uh, winning pizza eating contest down at the University of <laughs> Delaware back then. <laughs> but uh, when I was 18, yeah, I, I, I walked out of town hall when I had a 
mayor in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, who lambasted me for registering Republican at the time, and this is back when Reagan was president. And uh, as I was walking out of City Hall after I was finishing my first voter registration, a guy came up to me and said, well, you know, you ought to go to the county meeting. So I went a month later, and then they said, well, you know, you ought to become a county committeeman. So I went and said, okay, I'll run for county committee, and I won. And then the county, I guess, was warring with the state, so I got appointed by the county committee as one of the two state delegates. So I was like 18 years old going to these New Jersey State Republican committee meetings. And the thing that really crossed my mind, my sophomore year in college, I had a libertarian economics teacher. So naturally, I'm at one of these state Republican committee meetings in New Jersey. And they're talking about how to dole up the trash contracts in New Jersey. And so naturally, I raised my hand and said, by what authority does the state government have in trash collection? Mm -hmm. And a guy from the back of the room with a bunch of gold chains said, someone ought to tell Mr. Villanova to uh, leave, leave the Republican Party decisions from New Jersey trash collection to us. So I got introduced to corruption. Yeah, well, that's, and, that's uh, how it goes, man. It's, it's all over the place. Uh, well, I'm glad that you've taken a stand against that corruption. You know, I mean, you know, the idea is, uh, uh, I, I think, you know, one of the things we talked about working on the Ron Paul campaign together is I, I noticed in UCLA and at UCSD towards the end of his speeches, he talked about getting involved in local county committees and getting involved locally and trying to move the ball uh, and trying to transform the party. Uh, I may be overly optimistic, but after what I saw last fall in at the uh, at the, re, the the state convention and seeing five or six or seven hundred, eight hundred uh, young people that were signing up to vote for Ron Paul, I looked at that and said, you know, the, I think the future of the Republican Party lies within the Liberty Movement. Um, otherwise, right. I don't see how we survive. Well, that's what I was going to say. You know, I think the future of the world lies within the liberty movement. Well, as I just don't see how we're going to survive. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, well, that's that's uh, Brian and Mike. Um, we put in a lot of work over the last year. You, know, you know, were very kind into, uh, you, you know, teaching me some things, some of the ins and outs, and keeping my, my sense of humor up, uh, but also being serious at, at the right times. And uh, what, that's what we haven't done really on this show, Mike, is uh, talk about any of uh, your political uh, experience and, um, you know, what's, what, what got you involved in these things. Well, okay, uh, I don't like to talk too much about me. I like to talk about liberty most of the time. Okay. Talk about bust and tyranny. So all I can tell you is, oh, after getting hit on the head by too many different agencies of government, I said enough's enough. But I always hated tyranny even as a kid, and I understood the difference between what was right in the sense of, uh, you know, liberty versus tyranny, and I understood that, uh, you know, if I did something wrong, then I should get my just desserts for it, but if I was getting punished for something that, or I didn't do anything wrong, uh, that's basically, you know, tyranny happening right there, and I also understood as a kid growing up when people are being lied to that, uh, People are trying to control you by those lies, and that's that's the purpose of a lie. And looking around the world, I was pretty much an observer as a kid. Uh, you didn't hear a peep out of me. Uh, people look, boy, that boy's really quiet. He never says anything. Uh, but I was just observing it all and analyzing it and, and, and trying to figure all these things out. And then when I started opening up my mouth, it was, well, that ain't right. And it got you in, me in trouble and still does today. Uh, I remember junior high school, there, the, well, I wanted to call him a professor, but the teacher was uh, explaining the causes of the Civil War. And he said, you know, slave, the Civil Wars fought over slavery and going on and on and on. I go, I, yesterday we just read the, this proclamation of, um, on, or uh, Emancipation Proclamation, and it was written in 1863, so if the Civil War was started and fought over slavery. How come with this proclamation it didn't happen until 1863 and the war started 1861? I said, that ain't right. And 
So, uh, and that was the kind of thing that's where, you know, I've kind of always, always been with this stuff. And so, you know, you're used to t hearing the left and right arguing, and I come in and I go with what's called a Tertitian quid. It's the third thing, you know. And like uh, Brian was talking about there, uh, they'll be, the right and left will be arguing about, uh, you know, getting the fraud out of a program that's unconstitutional to begin with. And, and I go, well, the program is fraudulent, so why are you worried about the fraud within the fraudulent program? And so that, and, and looking through all of this and understanding, you know, what happens to all of us growing up in our lives and the propaganda of the political parties, the propaganda of the media, you name it, uh, starting the founders. Thomas Jefferson, of course, was of all the founders impressed me the most. Some of the things he said, you kind of had to really you looked at and you go, wow. And you looked at it and you say, hey, it's the same thing as now. Jefferson said that you couldn't trust anything in the newspapers or the periodicals, except maybe the classified ads. And it's like, wow, you know, he's telling me something here. Or his, the quote that I, it's part of Tyranny Investors here, is I'd sworn an eternal hostility on the altar of God over every form of tyranny upon the mind of man. So he's not talking about slaves and chains. He's talking about mind control. And so we walk around in the world, and we each have this matrix, this onion. I left it in the bag because I didn't want you to cry. <laughs> and with these layers of tyranny built upon it. And it's really interesting when I watch two people arguing with their, ma their own particular matrix. And they're arguing, and when I say in their matrix and the tyranny that's on their mind, they're arguing with things that they believe to be true but they aren't. They are not true and they're not factual. There's somebody's an opinion, somebody's opinion. Gotcha. And, um, you know, we had a, our friend over here this week talking about uh, the uh, guy that did the end of the Fed or did the uh, dossier documentary on the Fed, uh, Bill something. Money Masters. Money Masters. And, um, you know, all the things that this guy was saying in there, and I. I kind of stopped our friend and I said, hey, look, these things that he said, does that mean they're, they're true, they're gospel? And he goes, well, it sounded right. That's not good enough if you're gonna really get to the, the root of things and bust down tyranny. So the, the thing is that maybe, and Brian and I will get into a little bit here today, is that you know people will look at things on a pragmatic basis or they'll look at things you know that this will be uh, ultimately beneficial, but in, in the process, it's denying what I would say is the basic premise and our basic cause, and that is liberty. Gotcha. Know, so. Gotcha. And, and so, and so the, the point that I see here are, is that, you know, um, three people have a lot in common here. And, and I th what I want to try to get into, though, is to find some of our differences so that we can explore those and you know um, maybe get a little bit of uh, thought prov provoking uh, heat um, being a you know Mike's a libertarian he's uh, ran uh, you know as for Congress as a libertarian uh, on the libertarian board here in San Diego and uh, very active in, in getting people charged up and getting that that message out there um, and so where we find ourselves dividing it, it, within the revolution, I guess I'll bring it into context there. We'll bring it into the Ron Paul revolution, you know. Um, uh, Mike, is, you're, you're not going to be um, continuing to support um, the, the Republican platform. Oh, I never did. And Ron Paul never did. I mean, Ron Paul had Ron Paul's platform. Uh, you know, I read a G GOP platform, 2824, and is littered with socialists, socialism. And that certainly isn't Ron Paul. Right, right. So, uh, you know, and this is interesting, and then and I'm interested to hear Brian's take on it too. Uh, Ron Paul decides to run for president. I'm going, I'm supporting this guy 1,000%. I supported him when he solicited money to run for Congress because his views were my views. And a real ironic thing about the Ron Paul revolution is during this process, 
I headed up the grassroots movement here in San Diego for two years running, I mean two election cycles running. Most of the help came from Republicans. My libertarian friends were out there la la land because, hey, this guy's a Republican. I was like, what? You know, and I'm a big traitor to the Libertarian Party because there I am, you know, trying to get a Republican <laughs> elected. And so this is the nuts and the tyranny upon the mind that we will we'll have to operate with. Okay. And so, um, and so in that part part of the process, I was never a Republican, and I'm only a Libertarian because their platform and their general statement is uh, way closer to mine. That doesn't mean that. I mean, half the one I went to a convention once where half the libertarians there were rah 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 for the war, hmm. and the other half were against it. So it's like you know, uh, and being a real individual that's about liberty and busting tyranny, uh, I'm a irascible kind of guy. People are uh, upset with me because I'm not rah 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 Gary Johnson, the libertarian candidate. Why? Because the guy supports an abomination called the. Uh, fair tax, I call it the fraud tax, and I say anybody that is in favor of it is either too lazy to analyze it or uh, actually supports tyranny. There's no in between. So that's me, and that's where I come down on these things. Wait, what is The fair tax is the, the consumption tax, right? Right. Yeah. And they call it the fair tax, like the Patriot Act. Like right, 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 right. No, I, I, get you, yeah. you know, I get you 100% on that. So well, that's one of the that's one of the, the subtleties here. You know, you, M Mike will say, I, "I'm not uh, a Republican." Ron Paul didn't support the Republican platform. Uh, you know that it's littered with socialism. Now, I, I know that Brian's not a, a socialist or a pro, you know professing any of those types of uh, ideas. Well, y you know, I'll let you clarify that for us. But uh, the what what do you think about that that type of assessment? Uh, of the of the Republican Party at this point in time, I, I, I think it's fair. I think the I think this year's platform that was published at the Republican National Committee is a flawed but good document, and here's why: because they're addressing things that have never been addressed before. They're addressing things that the Republican Party has never addressed before, specifically the reestablishment of a gold commission, specifically auditing the Federal Reserve. Um, Specifically talking about the Tenth Amendment, specific, specifically talking about the concept of federalism. These are things that have been uh, historically over the past 15 or 20 years absent from the Republican Party platform. And I think a lot of that is a credit to the liberty movement. And I'll, and I'll actually speak differently than Mike and not call it the Ron Paul movement because I'm of the opinion that Ron Paul, while a fabulous, fabulous champion of the liberty movement, um, it's just a man that the liberty movement is going to have to be within each and every one of us. Uh, and now that just the man is retiring from public life, it's incumbent upon us even more to advance these ideas and to have shows like this and have discussions like this and to try to advance the principles of liberty. Mike, you're right. Is the RNC document riddled with socialism? I don't know if I call it socialism, but clearly collectivism. Um, is it a flawed document? Absolutely. I would agree with that, too. Is it a good document? It's the best I've seen in 25 years. Okay. Coming out of the Republican Party. And you think it's the best because it's having to address the... Because I think it's addressing issues that are, that are now coming to a head. I, I give an example. The Federal Reserve is such... You know, I, I work in, in the financial services business, so I, I, I knew about the Federal Reserve forever. I didn't really start realizing how insidious the Federal Reserve can be till about 2004, 2005 when I started saying, wait a minute, I thought, I thought the Fed chairman was supposed to manage as if we had something behind the dollar when I saw the detachment. When, when, and, and this is a lot of like what you went through too. I mean, as you learn more and more, you start saying, wait a minute, that ain't right. Right, Mike? I mean, you, you get to that point where you say that ain't right. I mean, the whole idea was we trusted this guy to manage our money supply as if there were something behind it. Well, guess what? I mean, there was nothing behind it. And when you give a guy that much power, 
he's eventually going to do what he thinks is right temporarily mm -hmm. and of course becomes a problem these things never would have been um, never been would never would have been brought to light within the Republican Party without Ron Paul right. and without Liberty people like him right and so as uh, you know a position that I find myself in um, having you know friends of, of all different type of political persuasions here um, and, and the folks who are uh, who may, may have been Republicans uh, already but we were, we were supporting Ron Paul they have um, continued on with their support of Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan as the presidential vice presidential uh, candidates <laughs> <laughs> I got, wait a minute I got to bust some tyranny here uh, you know that what Brian just said there you know and about the document all right now so they don't pay any attention to the Constitution so they they make a document a little bit more you know geared that we're going to audit the Fed and run what not uh, Brian said a couple points one the Ron Paul revolution versus the Liberty uh, movement see the thing is and I still identify it as the Ron Paul revolution because people who are in the Liberty movement got this tyranny upon their minds they don't know what Liberty is and the funny thing is this Ron Paul is Liberty mm -hmm. and you know you, when you ask ourselves and I ask my, the, why did I like this guy from the get-go 100% when I couldn't find any favor with any con uh, congressional person is that guy was always on the side of liberty he was a prohibitionist I mean an abolitionist not a prohibitionist right. and it's 434 votes one one uh, four, four, 434 yes one no I remember the headlines it's in funny the, how they all show up to those votes yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I remember the headlines in the UT over their shark t tail fin harvesting ban you know mm -hmm. and I'm reading that and I'm going God, I didn't see Ron Paul's name anywhere, but I saw one no vote. And you knew. And I'm going, yeah. Why did exactly did Ron Paul vote no against that? And then I got into it and I read it and whatnot. And I thought, oh, you know. Yeah, obviously, it, it was nothing about liberty. It was a prohibition that only caused a problem with uh, people who were uh, actually, um, you know, fishing for a living and more barriers on them, and they weren't engaged in any shark tail fin harvesting but, anyway. I'm going to tell you a good Ron Paul story. And I got this from uh, retired, well, uh, retired Congressman Joe Rogan up in Los Angeles. This is the guy for, uh, to give you an example, uh, he was the guy who lost his election. He was the House manager in the impeachment of Bill Clinton back in 1999. And he was telling this story because he was addressing the local Republican Party. And uh and was where he was talking about the impeachment, and he saw a few of us that were Ron Paul supporters afterwards. And he said, "I got to tell you guys my favorite Ron Paul story," and it was about four thirty-four to one. Yeah. Four thirty-four to one. What did Ron Paul vote against that everybody voted for? And that was to give, I think it was the Medal of Freedom to Mother Teresa. So Ron Paul clearly hates Mother Teresa. Oh yeah. Except that sick man. Joe Rogan said something's got to be wrong. I mean, why does this guy hate Mother Teresa? <laughs> so he went over, and of course, Ron Paul said, I don't hate Mother Teresa. I looked in Article 1, Section 8, and I do not see where it gives me the authority to grant the Medal of Freedom to Mother Teresa. However, if you'll check with the House, I think it was called Sergeant at Arms, you'll see that I wrote a check for, call it $560, uh, payable to the U.S. Treasury so that I can give my one... 130, 40, 40, 135th amount towards the medal. Will you write that check too, please, Joe? And I thought that was just a classic Ron Paul story. Yeah. Uh, Let me punch right in there on sure. that one. Now, Ron Paul said the Constitution didn't authorize it. Mm -hmm. But Ron Paul knows that that's a violation right. of our property Correct. rights. And that's why the Constitution doesn't allow for it. Mm -hmm. Because our government was established to secure our rights, not to violate them. And those other Cretans were vote, voting to violate our rights. And so that's even more important than the Constitution says, because I know Ron Paul wouldn't condone stealing if, right. even if the Constitution said you could do it. If it said, you know? hey, you're, you're allowed to tax people for give uh, medals out to people who've done good things? <laughs> no, it doesn't say that. No, but if uh, it did. Yeah, if it said that, he would, he would be against it, right. okay? He'd say that is an uh, unethical act even though the Constitution needs to be changed, he would say. And so that's why I keep referring to it. It's not a, the liberty movement. People I, I run across out there, 
they, they don't understand that at the core of government is the protection of our rights. And whenever they do the opposite, they violate that, then they're the enemy. They're our enemy. And I can't support these guys when people say, well, you know, and we'll get into that, moving the football in the right direction. Right, right. You hear me talk the, about that all the time. Yeah. They, when this, this guy stands for somebody who violates my rights ad nauseum, I can't support him. Mike, I can understand that, and this is why you'll this is why you'll rarely see me say to people uh, when I talk about why I'm going to vote for Mitt Romney in November. That's and, what we all want to know here. Well, I, 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 but 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 because I'll I'll go to that football, moving the football down the field. Cool. But here's the thing. Because I don't want to feel like I'm not part of this football team, you know. No, no, no. I understand. No, I understand. And I don't want to get into tyranny. You're, you're the ref, you're the referee. <laughs> right. But 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 here's the thing. But Mike. you're only a substitute. Mike, I, I I agree with you 100. percent One of the greatest things you taught me, one of the greatest things you did, was hand me Bastiat's The Law and said, "Read it. It, it lays out it lays out the model for a society. <laughs> it lays out the model for a just society very well. Uh, and and I believe it is something." Uh, should be incumbent upon uh, every high school student to read. I mean, if you're going to force anything in schools, that would be the one thing I'd force is for every high school kid to read the law. Well, I'm against force and fraud. I know you're against force and fraud, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, well, this, this but, is, but, but, but that would be the one thing. But, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the catch. Mike, we're losing on the education front. The, it's 434 to 1. We have to move the football down the field. Well, we're losing, Brian, because we're not going with the one. That's why it's 434 to one. We're not going with one, the one. We're not going with liberty. What is the public education but an abomination? I agree. It's an, I agree. Ab <laughs> it's an abomination of our rights. They right. steal so much money from us, we don't have anything left over to send our kids to the school we want to send it to. Well, I, I agree completely you know? with you. We talked about this a year and a half ago when we t when I talked about school vouchers, and you said absolutely not. If anything, they would make it tuition tax credits. And I said, but, 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 and you said they're, they're not entitled. And and I agree with you on this. But I think the point I'm trying to make, and I and and, and I see what I see the continuation, if you will. There's I see two ideas. There's the education approach, and there's the political approach. And if you're going to pick one of them. Um, there will be those that say the education, and I agree with you, Mike. We have to talk about the concept of, you know, a just society. What's moral? What's immoral? What's theft? What's not theft? And I think we need to talk about that all the time. But we're not getting it done politically. Well, we're not getting it done politically, and you're not, and you're getting the opposite done, educationally, if you will, and that's this because you look at the basis of what it's rooted in. All right, it's rooted in. It's a govern. It's a gov Once upon a time, we had private schools, and they had little community schools where mm -hmm. people couldn't afford it. Government gets its nose in, inherits this way, and the number of private schools are are way down. Right. The level of the education is way down. Right. I mean, we have we have a lot of technology that's kind of helped boost it up a little bit. People are getting educated on their own through the, uh, you know, computers and internets and, and, and things like that, but. The, the bottom line is the liberty through this process is removed at every step. The liberty you have to decide where your kid goes to school and what's being taught to them is... It's infinitesimal. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Mike, you know, there was a great article in the Wall Street Journal the other day that made me think of you. Uh, I actually made a reference to it because someone uh, cited it today and I talked about you. It was, uh, I think it was over the weekend in the Wall Street Journal, it said, are entitlements encouraging immoral behavior or bad behavior? And I just laughed because I remember the time you talking to me, and you were using an extreme example, but it was a good example about, you know, tagging the Social Security system and showing that an unintended consequence of Social Security may very well have been teenage, pre teenage pregnancy. And I got such a kick out of that because... You do an excellent job at pointing out un, uh, unintended consequences to people. Um, so that's part of the tyranny busting thing. <laughs> you know, it is, yes. We have this tyranny <laughs> like it's this perfect uh, model that's gonna ha everything is gonna be uh, smelly roses, and then all of a sudden you, you, you know you end up with a whole 
garden full of weeds and it was because you, you didn't really look at that seed that you were planting and and this this is the, this is like why where I find myself at and uh, that's what I was going to get into you know people are saying hey Mario you should you know you, you should be happy with what you're getting with Romney and Ryan because um, you know they they are better represent these ideas that you have about having a limited government having a, a, a constitutional government um, a government that's uh, um, built up to secure our, our, our rights here um, but, but I, 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 I have a hard time wrapping my mind around that Romney and Ryan will actually um, you know do justice for the cause or, or, or in any way carry the football that Ron Paul was was, was you know had brought onto the field when he was the quarterback. So th this is my, my question um, into that into those regards are um, do you think that Romney and Ryan are, are going to um, be a, a, a leaders in this liberty movement? No, no, absolutely do not. And 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 here's the reason that I'll eventually uh, vote for Mitt Romney, and it's because I believe that the political process of moving us back towards constitutional government is not going to start from the top down. The executive branch is entirely too powerful in this nation. The executive branch has overstepped its boundaries, and we've gotten to the point where the Congress is absolutely doing nothing. They're, they're not standing up to the executive branch. They're not doing their constitutional duty. However, I believe that as we replace the Congress with people that are more constitutionalists, we'll start getting legislation uh, to repeal other legislation uh, or to bust tyranny, if you will, uh, and I believe that, that we have a better chance of having that legislation passed with Romney and Ryan at the top than we would if uh, we have Barack Obama at the top. Okay. And so, I mean, doesn't that sound like... It almost wants me, make me want to bust a balloon. You can well, bust a balloon if well, you want. I was going to say. I, I mean, want to bust a balloon here. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like it, Mike. I we mean, need <laughs> more balloons now. We're going to run out of balloons. Because that, that is really a, a tyranny upon the mind of man. And when I hear uh. terms terms like uh, a constitutionalist, uh -huh. I mean, I just love that. Uh, how many of those 535 guys think they're constitutional? Uh, probably 20. No, they probably all think they are. Well, probably they all. Th uh, probably most yeah. of them do yeah. think they are, Mike. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah. and um, again, and the and twenty that are constitutionalists, that would m remains to be seen too, because what they are living with is their own little onion, the tyranny that's been built upon their minds. They grew up in a system that, uh, say, was socialism, when, and so it's become custom, it's become morally correct, if you will. Uh, of those 20 that you said are probably constitutionalists, ask them what th do they think that um, uh, Social Security is constitutional. That's, that's a great that's 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 you a know. great question. There's yeah. a litmus test. I think Mike, if you ask those 20 people, I think you could probably get 150 members of the House that privately would say to you, it's absolutely not constitutional. But they're politically scared, and I think that's the challenge. So they're interested in their own career versus like Ron career. Paul was interested in. Liberty all the way through I, his I, career. Look, Ron, I'm, not gonna, I, 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 I'm not gonna disagree with the fact that Ron Paul was an absolute hero. And the fact that he lasted as long as he did, the fact that he was able to do the things that he did. Was he principled? Of course he was principled. Okay. The fact that he was able to do it is astonishing to me. Because I believe, that, and, and I don't believe that most people are interested in their career. I believe most of those guys are interested in surviving so they can try to advance. And look. That's and, that, that's and, a career. Well. It, yeah, I, I, but I don't believe I don't believe it's careerism. I think it's more of the idea that they believe they can promote the message. Are they out for the? You think they're interested in promoting some message? I would ask a little bit later how to define that message. But versus they're interested in promoting themselves, surviving themselves, doing what's what they think is best for them. What is their purpose as a as a Congress? What is Congress's purpose? Uh, Congress's per Congress's pur purpose is to um, is, is to is to legislate is to is to uh, uh, they are the legislative branch. And what would be the purpose of the legislation? Uh, to secure individual rights. I mean, that's okay. what basically it. They, good. That's good. Actually, they don't know that. Okay. They think they think that they're controllers and they can s set policies. 
most all of them, down to the man except for Ron Paul, thinks Congress is Congress should control the economy. I, I well, I would disagree only in, in that it, I don't think it's 434 to one in that. I think there are many more. I think there are many more people that want to do what Ron Paul does, uh, but lack either the courage or the ability to. Uh, uh, the ability to get that message across. I, I, I can't answer. When we talk about motivation, uh, you and I are both guessing as to what their motivation is. I believe there are good people in Congress that are trying to get that message across. Well, I don't know. I know they don't vote like Ron Paul. And I know that why does why? And you have to ask yourself, why is the guy like that? And he's like that the same reason I'm like the way I am. I, I would vote that way. I know and you would. Just, there's just no, it's a rock. You know, right. it's no compromise with principle and with the purpose, what government's purpose is. Ron Paul understands it. I understand it. You get an understanding of it through the law. Tyranny Busters is working to keep teaching people that the answer is liberty. And, you know, you're elect, they're electing people and saying, what are you going to do for me? Uh, fix the education. Fix the economy. Um, you know, fix the unemployment rate. I don't have... Uh, fix the national debt. All of these guys, and Romney Ryan uh, included in the mix there, and all these Republican platform and whatnot, they present budgets that are designed to slow the increase right. of a budget that's uh, almost a trillion and a half dollars out of whack. Mm -hmm. And what does that communicate to me? They're going to try to, they're, they're actually trying to find another way to get the money. They're not going to cut. They're going to try to find another way to get the money to pay for it, and that's either through taxes or printing it right. and hanging debt on our children. And where's the moral integrity with these people? Well, it's, it's questionable and, and, um, <laughs> with, with a lot of the flip-flopping that goes on. And so th this was another you know, serious uh, concern of mine. Um, you we know, need more tyranny when it, balloons. When it comes time, when it, when it comes to this, uh, Mike some balloons. Ryan uh, Romney uh, ticket here, and I think that this is a, a good question for uh, for both of you guys. Um, is it is it okay to compromise? And uh, when is it okay to compromise? And and, uh, and then to to get the extreme side of that, is it ever okay to flip flop? You know, is it ever okay to say? Oh, one thing, and and then two years later, when the uh, tides have changed direction, it, you 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 use that opportunity. Well, let me to, answer that one. Uh, it's not okay to flip flop. It's absolutely okay to flip. You're a flipper, right? Right, right. I, I flip too. Right. I mean, you flip when you when you learn and you go through life, and you, it, because. Mike's talking about the onion and the layers of tyranny, but there's also on, there's also layers of liberty, if you will, too. Mike's fortunate to have gone through this for 30 years and say, here's the thing. But people really do come to this. Would you agree with that, Mike? Um, you know, a, f a few. I mean, it's still, I, I can always use Ron Paul. 434 to 1, you know. And the essence, well, I'm talking about people see, as they learn. They, they, when they, they can come through and, uh, you know, peel the layers of tyranny off, but not until they recognize that they are living in a matrix and recognize that these opinions that they have may be inaccurate. They may be based in tyrannies upon their mind. And to examine everything that they believe to be true, that they're, they're getting ready to put forth of an argument and, and somebody's maybe countering it, really look hard at yourself and your argument and what they're saying. Realize that it's possible and then you, you have a chance to come out. If you realize it's possible that you've got some real faulty programming, some real tyranny on your mind, and then it, it is possible to move forward. But if you hang on to some justification to an old idea, it's just like when Mario got kicked out of that Tea Party group mm -hmm. because he wants to argue a position that people have a right to discriminate with their own property. And when um, he, he makes a point to win his argument by saying, well, uh, it, sure, everywhere, religions, everybody discriminates. Can you be a priest in the Catholic Church if mm -hmm. you're a woman? Right. 
that was enough to get them thrown off the group because uh, but so if these people have people have attitudes where they're not going to look at what the, whatever these premises are that they're operating with then uh, then they won't be able to peel off the onion and far too many of us have these false premises we talked about the tea party groups mm -hmm. earlier I couldn't tell you what to stand for look I saw one post where a guy was complaining about hundred and thirty six thousand dollars of debt per person in this country what kind of candidate was he supporting early on somebody and maybe even now Romney and and Ryan, who are supporting that kind of debt. Right. They're tinkerers. I agree. Yeah. I agree. They're tinkering. Uh, but I think I think Mike just gave an answer. I mean, I, I think we we do want people to flip, right? To flip. Right. Uh, we don't you, want them to flop. When you say when you <laughs> like say it. when you say flip, uh, I mean that. Don't use that open ended because it's like if they got the right position on. No, we don't want them to flip. flip. Right. Okay. We do want some people to flip. I want them to flip from a tyranny upon their mind by removing the layer of the onion, busting that tyranny, so they can sit there and they can look at it and say, you know what, uh, that was a false idea I had. You know. Well, that, and so that that's, uh, brings me to exactly what I want to say. Okay, so if you flip and then you have this rock solid position here, is it ever okay to compromise that? Uh, you know, if uh, you're saying that um, if you you call you you know you believe in the uh, right to for the Federal Reserve to exist, you think this is a good thing. All of a sudden, you 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 flip over into understanding what sound money is, and um, is it then okay to compromise that position in order to be more acceptable or to to get voted in? How do how do we stand on onto these 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 really hard uh, you know, pr principles to have in this day and age? I think people I think people with principles compromise them every single day. Every single day you use a Federal Reserve note and say that you stand for abolishment of the Fed, you're compromising. Mm. I think every day that you uh, Mike and I flat out would agree that that that, that road socialism is wrong. That the the best way to run the roads would be through property rights. Let private property owners uh, charge tolls and maintain the roads and do whatever they want and give that gasoline tax back to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, Mike and I drive on the roads. So I would argue that you are making compromises already every day. The question is how far will you make those compromises? And and politically, you're politically if you want to work in the political spectrum, there are going to be compromises that made that are made. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not happy about them, but I'm more interested in moving the message down the road. Okay. Um, and, and what, well, you know, we to, to, this, to jump into that too a little bit. Uh, compromises being made. There's a there's a difference in that. Um, you know, you can say it's it's a compromise um, to live in the, the United States with all the political suppression. You could you could um, also shoot yourself. Uh, it's not a compromise when there's no option, other option open um, uh, to exist uh, or you or die. Uh, that's really a, an enforcement of a, a physical enslavement on you. But where the compromise, where you would be compromising if you once you understood that the Federal Reserve banking system is a fraud, it's a tyranny, it's a sophisticated theft beyond anybody's imagination is that you don't condemn it and call for its end and don't call for a substitution of it with something as e as equally vile there's people that are calling for end of the fed but they want a national bank controlled by congress no. to print fiat currency there's no reason for that no there's no reason for that and the, the real true position would be look we're all enslaved to this Federal Reserve banking system. We should allow for competing currencies. We should increase people's liberty to choose what currency they want to use and uh, you know, repeal all these laws that you're scared to death that you're thrown in jail 
uh, for printing silver and gold coins. I, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, the first the first thing you can do on that, Mike, is to uh, the first thing you can do is to eliminate the taxes on so on 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 uh, precious metals, uh, and and I think it's proper for states to start saying that they will accept it, like Utah did. Uh, and once you start doing this, and yes, absolutely stop putting people in jail for making up little round things, little round things of ounces of gold that have the an eagle or whatever on them. Uh, and if people choose to trade in them, that should not be, uh, there's there's no reason they're, they're, that should be against the law. Now, you and I both know that Gresham's Law will come into play, and the Federal Reserve notes will then become less less used uh, right. and, and people will then hold on to uh, that which they deem more precious. Right. All right. Well, let me get into a couple tough questions here. Cause I but feel like but I'm going to bring this up though, Mike. So, so how do you do that? Right. I mean, there, there's, two, there's, there's, there's one way, there's one way about talking about that, but there is a political process that I'm watching people whom I like advance. Mm. I think the audit, the federal reserve mm. act is the first step because you're getting this, you're introducing people to the idea that the behemoth, i.e., the Fed, is not um, is not is 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 not a sacred cow. That it could it too could be wrong. And I think once you expose that, you can then start saying, "Okay, we have audited the Fed. Look at it. They gave 16 trillion dollars to foreign banks. Maybe they shouldn't be controlling the currency. Maybe we should now uh, put this across." Well, Mitt Romney. Ain't no Andrew Jackson or Thomas Jefferson. I, I'm not going to defend Mitt Romney Mitt is a beneficiary of the bankster gangster right. Federal Reserve banking system. And if he's giving its 100% lip service, uh, if he's talking about audit the Fed, I remember not that long ago he's laughing at Ron Paul and saying, we already know everything about the Fed. They, we get the books all the time, rackety, rackety, rack. Uh, this, this, this give us nothing about a, a little bit of lip service uh, and it told maybe the whole system collapses and then people go, well, that was a pretty bad system. I had a book in here somewhere, I hope I haven't lost it, written in 1869 that talked about the creation of fiat currency uh, in the 1600s and the 1700s and this book written in 1879 is saying, how come they haven't learned from the previous collapses of these fiat currencies and now we're sitting there with it now so to hope and wish and think that somebody who is not principled Mitt Romney or Ryan their principle is control big government they're prohibitionist they think they got a, a grand scheme to fix uh, this or that thing um, they're like the George Bush prescription drug benefit guy or and guys have continued to over unauthorized overseas uh, war operations and ready to bomb, bomb, bomb Iran. Um, this is not anywhere close to leading us in a direction of more liberty. These guys are, are more guys well, are piling I, I, up. I, actually, I could, argue, I could argue a point for that. So do you believe Mitt Romney would veto and audit the Fed bill if it were presented to him? If it was presented to him? Presented to him, passed by the House and the Senate presented to Mitt Romney, do you think he'd veto it? If it uh, seemed uh, it didn't cause him any political consternation, yeah. I think it will cause him political consternation if he were if he were to go against, uh, if an audit the Fed bill were presented for him to sign into law, I think he would have a tremendous political pushback if he didn't sign that. And we got Ron Paul's audit the Fed bill after 30 years as right. far as we got it. And then the Senate won't even take it up. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, well, don't give me the Democrat. It's this, this. It doesn't matter if it was reversed the other way around. Agreed, the same, agreed. Same game but here happens. we, but here we have, here we have an opportunity. I believe that I believe that if Republicans take back, if Republicans take back the Senate and retain the House, you'll see an audit the Fed bill go to Mitt Romney's desk in the Oval Office, were he to win, pretty quickly, and I think he'll sign it. And I think that's the first step down the road. And I think the second step you're going to see is you're going to see people start repealing against capital gain taxes against metals. Well, okay. Uh, you're going to see if audit the Fed type of bill passes, just like, you know, uh, well, with not what Ron Paul's version of it is, but some kind of watered down version is, look, see here, here you go. All right, guys, we did it. Now, bye, bye, bye. I, I don't think that's true. I think okay. you've got enough. I think you're getting enough people in the house now. 
and I think you're getting people in the Senate that are actually trying to advance these principles. Well, and uh, my my concern is the words that get thrown around, especially with Romney or with Obamacare. Sorry, a little sl Freudian slip there. Uh, you know, he says, "Well, uh, yeah, we should we should repeal and replace." Right, so right. That's it, a bad. That's a bad thing. It drives me nuts. You know, so it's like, is that what is is that what happens um, when the the football is uh, being pushed down the field? Is it is it really being progress going forward, or is it just moving, moving on, sideways, moving right? side to side? Um, but let, the, let let me ask a tough question to both of you guys here. Um, First off, Brian, would you agree that um, you, you, there was a lot of people brought into the Republican Party oh, yeah. because of Ron Paul? Absolutely. Okay. And, I, and, and I think there was a lot of Republicans. I think there were a lot of Republicans looking for a guy like Ron Paul to run for president. Right. And so you um, you, you would you would uh, want these folks to stay in the party? Absolutely. I'll, I'll give you a, a, a great example. There was another great ex uh, article by a, a guy here in California named Sean Steele. Who is the National Republican Committeeman, and he is the guy. If you guys remember last year's uh, uh, Ron Paul event at the California Republican Party, that said, "I want the Ron Paul people involved in the uh, uh, in the Republican Party." So yeah, I, I don't think there's. I, I I think we're beyond the will they be welcome. I think it's now they we know they are the future. We know we are the future. We know that the young people in the Ron Paul movement are going to be the people that lead the Republican Party ten and twenty years from now. Uh, and you're able to say that with confidence, even seeing the type of shenanigans that have been going on at the Republican National Rule Convention. 12 and Rule 16 were an absolute abomination, and it was great. I'll tell you why it was great, because it was great and it's horrible. Because you actually saw a coalition of Ron Paul activists, social conservatives, and other grassroots activists realize that the tyranny that was being put down upon them. <laughs> tyranny busting time! <laughs> Ryan, you're talking 10, 20 years from now. You, you, you know, you have a totally different viewpoint than I have. You act like this is going to muddle along and, and survive 10 or 20 years. And we're, we're at the precipice now. It's ready to collapse. Your tinkers like Romney and, and Ryan and whatnot, who are you know, Romney especially, the flip-floppers, but big government gar gargantuan guys, a little facade audit the Fed bill. The, pro the, the problem is 100 years of this fiat currency is reaching a, a crescendo point of collapse. It's, we see it worldwide, and we got a, a, a federal government that is incapable of cutting itself down to size, so it's going to continue to suck out of the private sector. We got the private sector dying on the vine here, and, and then we have the government continuing to mushroom like this, where everything is going to collapse into this mushroom cloud called the federal government, destroying the remaining amounts of freedom that we have left. And it'll be like you got your government ration card, you got your government gasoline ration card, and you got your government issued clothing, and your government issued job that you work at with your government issued, and all your mortgage industry uh, collapsing into the bankruptcy courts of the federal government, into the receivership ownership of the federal government. This is basic economics. Well, this leads me into the tough question I have for you, Mike. You know, a lot of folks are going to say that, yeah, this, you, you, the picture that you're painting very well may be true. They might not agree with you on the timing of it. Um, but these, a lot of folks will say that if without using one of the two large parties right now as a vehicle for this message, <laughs> that, then um, how are we... Can a third party? I'm ready for the answer. It's not a third party, okay, okay. guys. Okay. It's individual. It's not some group. Republican Party saved me. Corrupted, perverted to the max. Democrat Party corrupted, perverted to the max. Libertarian Party sit on your hands, don't know what to do. It's none of this. No party's going to save you. It's individuals resisting tyranny, fighting against tyranny. I'm going to give a little seminar this weekend at the Ron Paul Meetup about the fully informed jury association. Okay. And the Fully Informed Jury Association is, it teaches people how they can get on a jury and say no to the tyranny in the federal government. Everybody's wimping around. What about uh, the Obama health care and whatever? Oh, 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 please repeal it. What are we going to do? Please. You know, how about just say no? All right. 
we Americans have to grow a pair. And when you get a ticket for something that's a, a bunch of BS, you go down there and you say, this is the BS. You make it more expensive for these characters that they can't, they're, they're, they're losing money with their tyranny. They, you make it so they, they have to stop it because they can't afford to keep it up. You cut them, you throw, you get involved individually. When Ron Paul said get involved, he really means get involved. Doesn't Republican Party or wherever you get involved, go to the water board meeting. I'm gonna go right. over there tomorrow. These guys get approximately eleven $1 hundred dollars a month for one hour. Right, one hour. Right. That's tyranny. That's and, plunder. And they get a pension. It's, and they get a, well, not a pension in this case, but uh, and I'm going to go over there and confront them, and they're going to uh, all hate me, and everybody around there is going to hate me. But you know, water bills are going sky high. They got seventeen million dollars invested in T bills. This is how they're selling T bills: is they they make these water boards and everything else, buy them. And so that's three thousand dollars of each customer's money that's sitting there invested. What for? Why the things are falling apart? They're not fixing them, and um, and the business decisions they make. They're increasing their salaries. Why worse? Going like this, but the the uh, whole thing is that people are not getting involved. I want Ron Paul to say right, he was part right, of the problem. Right, right. In this process, the Ron Paul process, and, and the doing the grassroots thing, how many people did we get on a weekend? 10, 15, Started 20? off big, and then it dropped down to about five to 10, right? Yeah, and when it started off big, it was at the meeting, not right. actually doing something, right. okay? So people are totally disengaged. They believe, like, the, the people on welfare, we got a welfare society, they believe, feed me and house me, health care, Clothing, whatever, giving my happiness. I'm not happy. Provide it for me. Liberty, provide it for me. Give me my liberty. It's like they're forgotten. You got to pay a price for this stuff. This is the only way out of this mess. It's not some political party is going to save us or Ron Paul is going to save us. And, and well, on that Ron Paul thing, less than 50,000 people in America contributed to the Ron Paul campaign. And it was only 3,000 people in the entire country that gave 2,000 or more. All right. Yep. This is why the revolution failed, not because the media was, yeah, the media did everything. Could, media spent billions. We didn't need to spend billions. We didn't need to spend a little more to keep up, and we would have won the thing. But it's like, yeah, I'm a Ron Paul fan, but I don't know if I want to give any money because I don't know if he can win or not. These people are not try not starving for liberty, and that's what has to happen. Well, I, I, I totally uh, feel your your passion, and but it's like that message that you're talking about. You know, if if we don't use something that already has a foundation and or, already is a, a well greased vehicle. How how do we get that message? Well, actually, out? I'll, I'll 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 argue with Mike on this one. Okay. Uh, this is. Uh, I I would argue this. Uh, both are right. Uh, Mike is talking the education approach, which means you've got to go to the water board. You've got to go to the the city council. We, it, I I live in Solana Beach. Solana Beach has gone crazy over the past ten years, and the reason is because there's 100 people that show up every single month, and they make the agenda and they push it through. So they win. Government goes to those who show up. That's the real. That's the real. That's the real thing, Mike. Government goes to those who show up, and if it's one person at the water board screaming and pointing out the obvious problems, it's it's a it's a lunatic. When it's ten, it's a coalition. When it's fifty, it's a movement. And so Mike's right that people do have to do people do have to stand up to the very simple things. At Solana Beach, we have. Two things. We had a uh, business licensing tax. It was only $25, but I uh, obviously went nuts, and I and two other people led this movement to defeat Proposition L, and it was very simple. Just went around to every business and said, put up a little sign that says no one L, and tell people why. Tell them it'll cost jobs and get businesses closed, and we won. Uh, and then what we haven't won is the plastic bag ban. They banned plastic bags in Solana Beach. Plastic bags are now banned. In Solana Beach, which does cause unemployment. Absolutely, we. My, my wife saw it today at the uh, the other day at the Vons. She was at the Vons, which is one of the two grocery stores in Solana Beach, and she said everybody's going to Albertsons because of the plastic bag bans. So they cut my hours back. Interesting. Huh. 
So I'll, I will make I'll make I will agree with Mike on this that it absolutely has to be in the individual, has to reach the point where they've realized that enough is enough. However, when I go back to the government goes government goes to those who show up. I believe you do you can be more effective within a political party if you take over that party. And again, leadership of the party will go to those who show up. So if you've got 100 people that show up at a water bill, a water board meeting, they can control the agenda of the water board. If you have 100 people that show up to the, you know, I'll make it up, uh, uh, Santee Republican Club, if you have 20 people that show up to that, they can control that. So um, I, I would ask then, by putting somebody like Mitt Romney, or Paul Ryan, who are big government folks, what, what are you, how do you keep the, the people in, in, in that party? You know, how do you say, hey, this is this is not how it's going to continue, you know, even though this has been the way that it's been been going on for the last. I, I, that's a great question. And, and, and again, I think it's I think you just I think you have to say this is to say, look, this is uh, uh, the, the president. The executive branch has too much power. We need to elect congressmen that are going to stand up to the elect executive branch and do their job and the job of government, which is, of course, to secure individual rights. Well, First. I got to bust tyranny on that one because when you say the executive branch has too much power, the legislative branch has too much power, and the judicial branch has too much power. <laughs> right, because, I agree. Because what you got is Congress writing that stuff like this right. on top of the Constitution, and they're supposed to know and love the Constitution, and the executive branch piling on top of that, and then you got the courts piling on top of that. And these arguments, oh, you got to support the Republicans because, uh, you know, we need a Republican Supreme Court justice. And Roberts just keeps Obamacare alive. Right. He could have put a, Sick man. a dagger in the heart of that he could have evil beast, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, All he had to do. Yeah. Go so, ahead, man. Go so, all he had to do. Keep going. We gotta get this. All he had to do. All Justice no, Roberts had to do was that. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Could have busted that tyranny. And so, the, damn, that sounds too easy, man. It looks too easy, man. Well, how does it? How can it not be what's going on? Well, the thing is, is that people are so matrixed, compromised, believing they believe that we got a constitutional government happening here. We could sit down and go over the Constitution, and I could show you what remains. We talked about it yesterday. No state shall accept anything but gold and silver coin as payment and debt. That's constitutional. That's ironclad. That is a mandate from the Constitution to the Fed, to the state governments, and they don't obey it. And you got one after another that deals with that. Uh, you know, the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Ban assault weapons. Which, which, which means, which nothing. means no, no law. nothing. No law. No licensing. No registration. Right. It is what it is. It I, is agree, what it I is. agree with you completely yeah. on that. Yeah. And so we're under this tyranny upon our minds that, that we're living in a free society. And until we bust that, until people realize, no, we're not, and stand up, you know, we got the TSA thing. Well, we got this guy, Sam, that you might know about it. He's uh, active uh, with the open carry, and Sam W., his last name's hard to pronounce. One guy, one man, stands up and resists that tyranny. Mario talked about something. What if everybody just said, uh, I'm not going through the scanner. Everybody says pat down. Mike, I, there's a, a, a good friend of mine I spoke with. Uh, he and I were talking about how... Uh, how insidious and, and immoral the income tax is. Yeah. And all it takes, you know, it, it, it only takes 100, 200,000 people to, uh, it only takes a couple hundred thousand people to repeal it. But who goes first, right? That's the challenge. Right, I know. <laughs> you go first. No, you go first. No, I understand. No, let's all go together. Hey, let Mikey do let's it. Well, as no, our, but, I, yeah, but, but our... Mike, I think that's the, you know, that's a great point. I mean, I hate the TSA, but I wanted to go to Philadelphia. Uh, I mean, this is the challenge, and I'm not saying this. I'm not saying this explaining it. This is the challenge we live in our lives every day. Is and while I agree with you that people have to finally stand up and say enough is enough. If you got a million people to just say on April fifteenth, not this year, the income tax would collapse. Actually, Brian, there's way more than that. 
but it's kept a secret and um, that it's kept a secret because they want to control the 130 that are paying it. If they knew there's 60 million that aren't filing in income tax returns. I know a friend of mine, his mother's 80 years old. She's never stopped working, never filed an income tax return in her life. Hmm. And um, so there's somewhere around 60 million that Good. don't. But the propaganda is if you don't, you're going to go to jail, da 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 da. People like me that are going around busting the tyranny, our, our heads are on the chopping block. But those 60 million that are, the government will get a, a guy like Wesley Snipes to keep everybody else in control, you know, because he's popular and whatnot and got too much to lose, so he, you know, caves into him. But uh, the truth is, there's at least 60 million people not paying that many income tax, hmm. working outside of the, you know, corporate. Umbrella, and I say God bless those people because they're not funding this tyrannical beast. Yeah. All right, well, there's our hour, man. It went by really fast. And Brian, thanks for coming well, on the show. Cool. Thanks for having Hopefully me. We hey, can you have made it back awesome. on there. You, you made it fun, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was much more civil than I thought we were going to. Good job, Mike. Because I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I had to sit in the middle. Well, I, I mean, I, let me let, let me tell you. I think why it's civil. Mike is one of the greatest educators out there, and Mike, you have a great knack for knowing when to push and when to just say okay and and you're good about pushing always but not too hard and i think you do a great job when i talk about how come i get so many people mad at me i, I don't know why <laughs> some well, people because, don't like to be pushed at all right so i think people don't like to be pushed at all and people hate to be told that they're wrong and this is why i rarely will argue or debate with mike <laughs> because it's because he's usually right uh well, I'm going to go over the waterboard tomorrow. Well, if I had one of those balloons, there's, I'd pop it right now. <laughs> there's going to be. Do you, guys gonna be do you guys waterboard people on this show? I didn't know that was. Well, is this what this thing's for? <laughs> the waterboard, and I'm going to go over there and say something, and they're not going to. No, they're not going to like it. They're not going to be happy. Well, and then so like uh, you know, he's saying we get five, and uh, uh, you know, you're a your group, right? Ten, or a ten-year coalition. Ten-year coalition, fifty-year movement. movement. So, uh, and a hundred? You're the water board. <laughs> well, man, You're the new water board. We, how much would they be paying then? $100,000 a month plus health insurance? Jeez. All right. Well, uh, thank you for tuning in to Tyranny Busters, and we'll be here next week. Have a good night. Good night, all. Do I need to